the brakes. This is just a kit from Quick Performance, which a lot of people sell this kind of kit. Uh, it's like a bolt-on disc brake. These are D150 something calibers, but they come in the kit again. If you do enough research, you can figure out which one it is. Um, these are again rotors that came in the kit, um, which I was gonna change to these Hawk Talon ones, but I'm gonna end up changing the whole brake system. So I just wanted to go do a little overview because there's not a lot of info online about these brakes. So um, how to do like a kit on here from nothing. So like this came with no tabs welded on, no mounting for the brakes at all. So it's like they come with the steel braided kit, which if you know anything about performance brakes, steel braided is okay for it's but i mean it's necessary for like a front brake line because the front brake line has to move so if you use the rubber one it's got way more deflection than the teflon line steel braided line so that's kind of a necessity um and then for the housing though running that whole piece stainless braided there's hella deflection there's no way i'm doing that so I mean, you can do it, probably doesn't matter, but if you've ever had a really good brake system, then you'll know what the difference is. So, constant pedal, very, uh, how do you say, consistent pedal. Uh, yeah, so what I did was I took this off of the 12 bolt, welded a nut on the housing, so that now bolts up. That's for the center splitter. Then I bought these from, I bought them from Summit, I believe, but everyone and their mom sells the same kit so this is just a 12 bolt kit and then i just bent it cut it flared it i'll show you more when it's on there these little splitters i just got a 3 16 to dash three and then i just bought a a braided line for the length that i needed i believe yeah this is a 12 inch line uh you could probably get away with a little bit longer um and where's the other fitting? There's some 90 degree banjo somewhere around here. Um, yeah, so I originally bought 90s, which were too tight. I could have made them work, but I would have had to grind out a piece of that brake housing. Um, so these are 45s from Earl's, uh, stainless. And yeah, so they'll just basically bolt up there. This side will go to here. This little housing has these clips, just like that one, which you can't see. And then instead of having it bolted on, it's just welded to the housing. So the line will lay, let me see if I can. <clears throat> So the line will basically be like this. Whoa, whoa. One-handed. So it'll basically go like that. This will be inside that hole, but. Yeah, so I'm gonna assemble all that and I'll go over it again once it's all laid out. So, all right. So what I'm trying to do here, this is just mock-up. So I just wanted to get this caliper mounted to where it will be so that I can figure out where I need to mount these tabs. Uh, let me see if I can find that tab that I'm talking about. So what I'm trying to do is mount these tabs. I'm going to have to weld them to the housing. So these can go through here like that. 12 bolt, not for a 9 inch. So what I'm going to do is just cut the ends off and slide the fitting back, reflare them. They'll go to this here. Problem I'm having. Yes, that works, but that is way too hard of an angle. Like that's a solid 90. So I'm pretty sure I got these from Speedway. I'm pretty sure I can get one with a 90. I don't want this line on this side of the rear end. This is the back of the rear end. So the coilovers are gonna go off at an angle. So I won't be able to have that tab there. But if I can get this to kick a 90 out, 
then I can run the line mount up here. The only benefit of running flex line on these is when I change the center section because the nine inch just drops out. So you can change the nine inch, but if you don't have flex lines here, you gotta break your brake lines and re-bleed the system. So what I'm gonna do is get a banjo fitting that goes here and it'll be a 90 degree. It'll just kick right around back up there. So what this is, I'm just bent up because I don't have the lines yet, I gotta order them. So I just bent up a piece of metal just to see where it's gonna sit. If, as if it's the line so that I don't have to wait to weld these tabs on so I'm gonna weld these tabs on this housing right now and then also hold on I gotta take this off this just mounts the center piece for the split I just don't want this to be too short they sell a bunch of different lengths for this, so worst case scenario, I can get another one, but the one I have in there is brand new. So, so what I'm gonna do is take this off. I'm either gonna make a shorter bolt or, um, I don't know, weld a nut on the housing or something, or just weld the bracket to the housing entirely. I'm not sure, but that's what I gotta do now. So, back to it. I'm just showing you the welds here. This is me uh, when I'm done burning those in. That side looks way better than this side. This side was the first side that I did, so I had to adjust the welder a little bit. That was the first one. This was a little hot. I was moving a little fast. This is the center. It's just a nut welded on there. You can't really see horrible camera skills. Okay, so I'm going to paint these red. Saved you guys the annoyance of watching me tape stuff off. So, yeah. Even though I'm going to end up changing these in the future... They're gonna rust if I don't paint them, so why not go red? Because red makes you faster, so. Make sure you like and subscribe, comment. I always get people asking me questions in the comments, but you don't even like the video, you don't subscribe, like, but you want me to help you. You know, you're watching the video, it's always helping you. I think it's crazy how this world is nowadays, so definitely hit that like button, subscribe, drop a comment if you're feeling what I'm putting out. <laughs> Appreciate it. Brake line or brake calipers came out pretty good. Brake line came in. So basically how it will sit. Oh if I can do this is like so. So it'll be under the caliper. It's gonna be twisted around though. So It'll be like that. The whole, whole thing coming apart. You get the picture. It'll be twisted like that and mounted to the caliper like that. But over here. Just assembling the mounting bracket for the caliper. So that goes on first. There's little T-bolts that go on the back. There's nuts and uh, lock washers that go in the front side. Then they have little spacers that go on like there. See those little silver spacers? Different kits have different setups for this, but it's all basically the same thing. You can even make those if you had a plasma cutter or some grinder skills. Just one side, I totally messed up filming the bracket on that. Just the other side doing the same thing. Uh, if you see at the end here coming up, you'll see when I'm mounting that little spacer for the flare nut to dash three right there. Now we gotta get it under the, under the car. The brake lines are tightened down. Center line is in. So you've yeah, got a good amount of clearance between the control arm and the brake line. And then the, <clears throat> the coilover will be over here. So more than enough room for clearance for that. Now I gotta put on the rotors and the brake calipers. Yep. Coming together, looking clean. All right, I'm just assembling the rear brakes now. Always use brake clean. Those things don't stay shiny just from luck. There's all kind of crap on there they put on there. Um, there's so many holes here. It took me a few tries to figure out which one's which. Uh, the the driver side, no passenger side. This is the driver side. Passenger side sucks. 
had to bend the studs a little bit to get it to line up. I thought I had the wrong caliper at first, but let's tighten them down. Make sure you add uh, some grease in there, some high temp grease, uh, just to stop squeaking. Changing the proportioning valve now. Uh, this was disc drum, changing it to disc disc, uh, which is important. Um, if not, you could get by by just running solid lines to the front and then a adjustable one in the rear. I was going to do an adjustable one, but I can always add one later. I don't think it's needed. I believe with these old schools, when you run a disc disc, there's no actual bias difference in that block. It's just a straight through block. I could be wrong. Just putting on the other one here. I messed one of my lines up using an old tool, stripped one of the lines out of buy a new line. You see that tag on there? And then my mount is not a factory mount location, so I had to rebend these. It really sucked. So um, save you the time of putting back on the wheel well. But so I'm going over all the lines, tightening all the fittings. Um, this, I'm not going to show bleeding the brakes. That's what comes up next. But this is mainly just a making and mounting the brake lines for the nine inch housing video. So there's not a lot out there. Right, so brakes, brakes are done, fully done, fully tightened up. Uh, as you've seen in the last one, the uh, proportion valves changed. Top line, which I didn't really show a lot of, is in, tightened up. Those rear lines, I was gonna put, so I was gonna put little tabs on the housing right there, that's what I'm pointing out. But I don't think it's gonna make any noise, it's pretty sturdy. If I need to, I'll add zip ties right there, but I don't think I'll need it. And then there's the loop in the braided line I was trying to show you guys earlier. That's how it sits on there, so. There's the 45 degree Earl's banjo. Changing these brake pads, just cause the brake pads that came in the kit were not to my liking. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's it, man. So next one will be a coilover video. Working on that now, so. Thanks for bearing with me. Appreciate it. See you in the next one.